Hello and welcome to the fourth edition of Hitting the Fairways in association with Creative Landscaping Works in Letterkenny. Today's show is all about youth golfers. I will be talking to some of the best up and coming youth golfers in the Northwest. Joining me first are Carlos O'Reilly and Luke Kelly. I will be joined later in the show by up and coming golfers for Port Salon, Kieran Page and Kieran McCormick. Carlos and Luke, thank you very much for joining me to talk all things golf this morning. Hello. Yeah, sure. You're all looking uh, you're like fresh and bright. Uh, is this the, are you normally in bed or are you normally up and working or what's the normal for you on a on a Tuesday morning? Uh differs, depends. Up working. Up working what about yourself? today. What about yourself, Luke? Yeah, uh, better work for better golf normally. Okay, well if you if I look out the window here at the morning, it's just not a great day for golf, to be honest with you. Um Luke, I'd like to start uh, with you. You're currently playing off three, uh, sorry, plus one. Let's, yeah. Let me get that right. Um, out of Beaver Golf Club. You're also a member of Dunfanny. Um, What age did you get into golf? Yeah, I first started playing when I was about four years old. And then my like, dad sort of got me into that when I started. And then just haven't stopped ever since. Well, you're, well, you're, de you're definitely doing something right. Plus one is uh, is pretty phenomenal. Um, so, so what was your first handicap? Can you remember? Mm -hmm. 36, I think. Yeah, my first one, the first proper one was 36. 36. How, how long ago was that? Yeah, I think it was about eight or nine, maybe. And then, yeah, it was tough work getting that time. I'd say that. And, and probably a lot of golf balls were bought and purchased and clubs were changed and uh, excuses made along the way. What about yourself, Carlos? What uh, what are you playing off currently? Um, playing off one currently, yeah. One, so you're another very, very low man. I tell you, I wouldn't like to meet you two boys in a match play, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> what got you into golf, Carlos? Um, I think it was, a, there was a junior camp in Dunfanahy, so uh, I just signed up for it and then I kind of loved it ever since. I. And are you are you self-taught or have you had lessons? Oh, definitely not self-taught. No, I've had lots of, loads and loads of lessons from... Uh, from Seamus too like when I was younger like that got me started he did them junior camps so yeah he kind of helped me with my swing and putting and driving and stuff so yeah no he definitely did help me a good bit anyway and what about yourself Luke is it is that be the same for yourself have you are you self-taught or have you um have you been managed to have lessons along the way no I've had loads of lessons as well so Seamus would have helped me as well when I first came to the family and helped all the all the boys who were all members there, like Carlos, a couple other guys as well. He helped all of us. And then, yeah, yeah. had lessons. lessons there, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good golfers and uh, who are coming under the banner of Seamus. Um, I, I know James Sweeney and Connor Hanna, uh, Darcy Hogg, to name of but a few. Um, and and I know that you guys all collectively play well together. And we'll and we'll talk about that later on uh, as, as as we go down. Um. I suppose let's look at the last 18 months as as we've all had struggles. It's um you guys are I think you're you're if you're not 18, you're just about to come out 18. It's been challenging for you, but uh, you've also managed to reduce your handicaps uh, under covert restrictions. Um so I'll come to you, Luke. What have you been what have you managed to do? Because there's, there's been months where we couldn't play. Were you still able to practice? Um I was still able to do loads of putting and stuff, like on the carpet and all in the house. Um and they did a bit of chipping outside in the garden. Not sweat it really. Uh, but yeah, I don't really know. Like I think it's just because I'm a wee bit older, and maybe that helped to get the handicap down a bit as well. And how many how many shots have you lost over the last eighteen months? Uh, I think I went into the start of the pandemic, playing off three or four, and plus one was four maybe. So uh, as a golfer, I know how hard it is to lose one shot, but for you to actually go and lose four shots, is, uh, it, it is phenomenal. What about yourself, Carlos? I think you're in the same boat. You um, you managed to lose shots as well. Is that right? Uh, I think I lost um, maybe three shots last summer, yeah. If and what you was your, what was, what did you put that down to? So Carlos, the, the golfer, a good golfer playing off four, all of a sudden... Is it the game just comes to light and you start you just hit, hit the ball down the middle more, or did you did you know you had to work on something to 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 get that drop to to make that difference? Um, I think a few things just started click like, and I 
probably started practicing a lot more like before i probably would have uh, just went out and kind of started and hit balls played 18 holes went home like and maybe now i've probably spent a lot more time on the practice range and chipping and putting trying to perfect them yeah and and you're definitely reaping the benefit of that and what about yourself luke what's the what's the strength in your game um i think driving plays a big part like i'm able to keep the ball on the fairways a lot of the time and that makes the second shots a bit easier and then hopefully get a wee bit closer to the hole as well so yeah against. that's where i'm definitely going wrong then that that fairway one um and what's what average wise what are you hitting the ball mm, 290 ish just depends really but somewhere around there so a quick question for you on that, right? You're you're going well. You're hitting the ball two ninety. You want to get an extra ten or fifteen yards because you're into the wind. You know you want to be hitting a nine iron. Do you swing quicker or do you swing slower? Into the wind. Into the wind, yeah. yeah slower then probably. Swing faster, the ball just go higher probably. Yeah, but you do the same, Carlos. Oh, I think I just stretch a bit more in the tee box, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just make sure you get there by hook or by crook. And what's your strength in your game, card? I mean, obviously, I've seen you playing. Um, I have to say now, as, as even a couple of years ago, I, I just found it amazing how you're able to shape shots. Uh, one shot you can hit with a draw, the next thing you can fade. What's what's come on in your game? What is the what is the one thing that you think that's what I'm good at now? Um, I think I've just become more consistent, like. Um, I'm probably 100, 120 yards out of the wedge. I'm always kind of maybe 20, 25 feet, never too far away. Leaves good chance for a two putt then or a one putt. Like, I, I didn't hear the word three putt there. It's always one or two putts, is it? Oh, Jesus, three putt a lot of the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tester for you, Carlos, because I've seen you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to go back now and just a memory. I, I I actually can claim to fame as playing with Carlos O'Reilly. I hit the best drive in my life, didn't I? You remember it on the 10th um, oh. over, over the water in Dunfanny and I hit the green and I leapt out for a two uh, or, or, or missed the, the pot for the two from about 30 foot. Uh, that's, um, what happens. that's what happens when you play with good players, isn't it? I don't know. It was down to the fact that it was, I think it was <laughs> <brilliant. laughs> And I hit the best shot I've ever hit in my life, but... Uh, it does, in fairness, I'm laughing, but playing with good players always makes you a better player. Um, Luke, you, you've had success in, in major tournaments uh, across the, the, the last three to four years. And namely under 16's uh, Ulster final, you won, you're an All-Ireland Schools winner. And probably the biggest claim is the Irish under 17's. Um, and you won that by two strokes. Tell me more about that victory um, and how many days the competition was run over. Um, it was down in Turles, so the competition was three days long. And the first day was like everybody played in it, and then after that, it was a cut. And then the last two days were just like whoever made the cut. Um, and then I think I went into the last day, couple behind for like the overall tournament. The like it was an under eighteen tournament, um, a couple behind, and then the guy that was leading that sort of stretched away, but I was able to able to win the under seventeen one. And, Come second overall, anyway. That that's a great achievement, and and I suppose how were the nerves? You 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 know you're coming up the last. It's a it's a major achievement to to get over the line. What what's what's your feeling when you you know when you've got you've you've got that last hole, the 18th? You need maybe you needed a par. Did did you know what you needed to win? I think I birdied it, but I think I could have. I think I just needed a par. Um, so yeah, I quite like it. Like it's. I quite like being under the pressure and stuff. Carlos would probably say the same. It's quite fun. <laughs> you a pressure man, Carlos? No, definitely not. Bottler. <laughs> no, it makes it more makes it more interesting. Probably like it's uh, anyone can play a good kind of when there's no pressures off and you're kind of no scorecard in your hand and then it looks is like when you have a scorecard in your hand, everything's just so much harder. Yeah, and, and the maiden victory is always a big one, isn't it? It doesn't matter if it's a monthly medal or it's an All Ireland Championship. It's it's actually the doing. But and when you get over the line, it definitely helps you for the next time. Um, and and one of these days, I, I will find out how that feels. But 
<laughs> it's great that you guys can tell me. Carlos, yourself and Luke actually formed together as a team um, and you won the Donegal under 16s. Um, tell me more about that competition and, and what do you remember about the victory? Um, I think it's just uh, every club in Donegal. Like, uh, I think there's probably maybe 16 teams and uh, it's obviously the last 16 quarter final, semi final, final. Yeah, and uh, so there's three matches and it's uh, four balls, so it's uh, two players on each team. The best score the whole wins. Yeah, and uh, obviously we had, a, we had a pretty good team. After all, like uh, James, Sweeney, Connor, Hannah, myself, Luke. Tom McClintock, like um, kind of the junior academy in Dunfanny, all of us were just coming up to a good age. I think that was 2018. And um, oh, we beat, I think we beat Kidora at Nether Kenny. And oh, it, was, it was great to win something kind of with all the boys you grew up with playing golf and kind of we were like starting to be like you're all very good friends too, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's an important part as well. Is the is the friendship that you gain as as you win and as you grow as as people. Um, so that's Carlos the golfer. Okay, so just uh, and I, I also know Carlos as the the Gaelic football player and a, and a talented one at that. I know you don't like me really talking about that, but uh, you've you've represented um, your county at I think all youth levels. Um, are you still involved in the county at present? Yeah, I'm uh, still playing with under twenties. Yeah. Very good. And and with that comes pretty intense training. Um, so how often are you training per week with them? Um, probably two weekdays and then maybe a, probably training then maybe Saturday or Sunday as well. Yeah, so it uh, takes up a lot of time, yeah, but no, it's great. I enjoy it, like, so it's good. And and, and I would describe you as the, the tenacious midfield player. Um, has that helped? Have you transformed that maybe into your golf as well? <laughs> Um, no, probably just um, probably determined, kind of maybe. Um, determined, I, I like uh, kind of to do well, I suppose. It probably helps me in the last couple of holes when uh, when the pressure's on too. Like, help probably comes help from football as well, kind of works hand in hand to kind of deliver or keep a good score going or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so it's the determination that's it's actually built into you, isn't it? Oh, well, I think kind of all footballers have it, like the kind of will to win, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, and, and just the last question of that is, how do you manage to find time to to do both? Because obviously you've you've said that you've put work into your golf to improve what you're doing. You have Gaelic football. You know, it's, where where's where's Carlos, the, the, the downtime? What Does he get any at all or is it all just sport? No, I don't sleep at all. No, I'm only joking there. <laughs> No, I, I, I'll always have a few evenings off week and I'll probably just head down to the golf club, like, because, kind of, there's not much to do in the evening, I suppose, and you're off, and golf's very relaxing too, like, so, you know, definitely helps. Yeah, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen you stressed now. It's, you're always a pretty cool customer when uh, when you're heading out in the tee box, and that's the that's the way to be. What about yourself, Luke? Um, do you play any other sports? I play rugby as well, so I do rugby training once or twice a week, just depends. And then, yeah, so we do that and, and golf as well. So let's look at the, so how do you mix your week then? You obviously, you've, you've got studies. Um, how do you, is it, do you golf three times a week, rugby twice? How, how does that work for you? I usually have rugby on a Monday or a Thursday night and then I work like three or four days a week as well. And then golf, just after just have to work on planning it out a good bit. So, so I just bet, heard the word work there as well on top of that. Yeah. Pretty phenomenal. That's, that's superb. Um, look, you've just recently been accepted for a four-year scholarship, um, which is an amazing feat in Oakland and Detroit. So mm -hmm. tell me more about how that came about. So I got help through an agency called ProDream, and I work with loads of young golfers who are looking to get scholarships out to America um, and they sort of they sort of contacted a few different universities and uh, the university reached out and I had a few different calls with the coach and stuff like that and then just decided on that one because it's a really good program and they're progressing they just won the, their league finals this year and got through to the regional uh, NCAA finals as well 
And, and so how does that work then? I mean, it's a, it's a dream, you know, you're, you're going to play golf. Um, how do you do the work study balance? How does that work for you? And um, I think, so the university will obviously help a bit and then the coach will help. That's part of their role as the coach is to help you balance the golf and obviously the academic side as well. And then like I think most mornings you'll have class and then you'll have time for golf and then probably do a bit of study in the evening again as well. And the other thing that you'll be pretty much guaranteed is that big thing in the sky called the sun, which <laughs> yeah. you can you can go out at six o'clock at night and you'll be guaranteed that you can go and play golf. Um, when, when are you taking up the scholarship? When do you start? So I'm taking a year right next year and then starting in August of 2022. Very good. Very good. And just a last question on that is, did you have to be at a certain level from a handicap perspective or was it academic or was it a mix of both? Well, handicap kind of. It's more how you do in all the events like Irish Boys and all that. And then obviously a handicap comes into it as well. And then I had to sit the SAT test as well, so we have to do good enough in it still to get into the college. Yeah, it's really it's really exciting for you. I'm I'm I, I'm delighted. And I wish you the real the, the very best of luck with that. And and who knows, it might be the European Tour you end up or the US PGA. But the important thing is that the studies go along with it, and it's great to get that opportunity to to uh, to deliver on both. Um, what about yourself, Carlos? I, I suppose I'll come back to that. The, the the dream off the future is it Gaelic or is it golf or or where do you see it? I don't know. Maybe uh, Luke might need a caddy or something to <laughs> make, might be able to fit that bracket. <laughs> no, um, just whatever. Play. Uh, keep playing both at a decent enough standard, suppose, and just keep enjoying. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, and 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 you're not a bad soccer player either. So there, there's that option as well. If well, depends who you ask, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I I can I can test him for, for you. You're uh, you're a very good soccer player too. Um, you're in the middle of the leaving set at the moment, um, and and you 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 obviously you hope to go into college from there, are you? Uh, probably hope to go to um, college in September. Yeah. And what what would you like to study? Is it business or sport or what are you going to do? Um... Hopefully something down the business line yet. Very good. So you're gonna you're gonna run the country for us. Oh jeez. The country could be going up in smoke, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just a last question for the two, and I've loved having you on. Um have you ever actually played each other in match play? Yeah, Carlos beat me. Long, beat long, me? long, long time ago. <laughs> So the next question, we, we, did you have to give him shots or was it a scratch game or what? how did that come out? No, I think there were shots. There were a few shots involved. Few shots. <laughs> Imagine playing off one and you're getting two shots off somebody. That's That that wouldn't happen too many days now. Normally oh, you'd be given shots. I think this is back in the maybe the 20, 25 handicap days. So I was playing off about 12. <laughs> <laughs> It would be more like a birdie fest now between the two. I'd love to watch it. It'd be great. We must do that this summer, actually. We'll set something up and we'll get the two years out just uh, take just ripping our course apart is what you, I, I reckon you'll do. Mind you, that said, we might, the wind gets up. I don't think either so rip it apart. But uh, what I want to do is, is wish you well um, and, and thank you very much for, for coming in today. It's been great to, uh, to catch up with you. Um, it, you are a credit. To, to youth golf and what you've done thus far. And this is only the start of your journey because uh, your, your life's ahead of you. But your your attitude and, and, and your commitment is is to be commended. So um, continued success. Uh, keep working hard because the end journey is not there yet. And, and who knows what you can achieve in the future um, in the years ahead. So the very best of luck, lads. And and, uh, and thanks a million for coming in to us today. Um, that's Carlos and uh, and Luke Kelly who joined me there. Um, I'm also now going to be joined by two more budding young golfers. Um, they're slightly younger in age, but uh, nonetheless, not in talent. I have uh, Kieran McCormick and uh, Kim Page, both of Port Stanley Golf Club. Lads, you're very welcome. Hello. Can you hear me okay there, Kieran? Yeah, I can hear you. Good lad, good lad. Kieran, I want to come to you first. Um, 
what was your first handicap when you started playing golf? And how long ago was it? Uh, started playing off 28 in Letter Kenny about three to four years ago. Three to four years, and that was your first handicap? It was my first handicap, bye. Okay, so so the next question is tell everybody, what are you playing off today? Three. Wow. 28 down to three in roughly three years. That's pretty phenomenal. Um, what do you what do you attribute that to? A lot of practice and different standards of golf and different courses and coaching and lessons as well. Obviously, learned a lot off my dad and different people and my coach as well. Okay, and and Kieran, I'm going to come to you because you, like you're very similar. Um, you started was it 19 at the handicap you started? Yeah, 19 down in Dunfanaghy about two or three years ago. Three years ago, okay. Yeah. And and today you're playing in Port Salon, yeah. which is probably one of the toughest courses in the Northwest. Um, what are you playing off today? Uh, five. Playing off five. Uh, that's just, so I, like where are you guys going to be in another two years is what I'm starting to think to myself. Um, there's another Luke Kelly on the, or two Luke Kellys on the horizon here without doubt. Um, Kian, two years, 14, or, or Kian, two years and 14 shots, right? What's the secret? What what have you done? What have you done to your game? Is it clubs or is it coaching? Or what, what is it that's got you that success? Uh, one of the things is joining Port Town. Just links golf as a golf started and you learn to play every single shot and you can take that to every course and just shoot better scores and get better. And would you would you say the same thing, Kieran? What what you've obviously lost a lot of shots in the last couple of years as well. What what have you done? Did did you change your clubs or what have you done, Kieran? Yeah, well, I got just I was using ladies' clubs and then I changed to like a full set of men's clubs, which probably really helped. And then just got a bit older and matured a bit, like didn't learn to just play golf the right way, not to go for everything and just. Take the easy shots. Do it, do it. Try and keep it simple. Would that be fair? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I'm going to go to to Kian. Um, Ty has, has has obviously had restrictions, and I was asking the two lads there earlier as well. Um, what's you've obviously played a bit more over the last couple of years. What's what's your best score in Port Salon? Uh, I think it's a 73. And what were you playing off at that time? I was playing off about a six. That was recently. I was playing two over was my best in the competition. That was when I was playing off 15. And did you once have 49 points at one stage? Off your off, Were you playing off 15 at the time? Yeah, I was, I was a two over around 49 points. Yeah, that's... that's what I, and, and the day and the conditions on the day, were they, were they pretty good? It was, it was good. It was windy, but Port Island's always into, easier into the wind. Yeah, and Kieran, what you, you, yourself now? What's your best score in the course? Uh, I think it's a seventy-four, uh, three over or three over. Yeah, it was just I wasn't in a competition. I think my best is four over in a competition. And you've been lucky enough. You've you've won a couple of competitions down there as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've won a few. I won the scratch cup or well, the intermediate scratch cup last year. Yes, yeah, so that was good. Good to get up and running. That was a good milestone. Yeah, it was in fairness. And Kian, like Kieran, Ty has enabled you to to improve your game further, right? And uh, you've gone through that transition year. You spent most of the year in the USA. How did that help your game? Uh, it's just a completely different game of golf out there. There's thinner air, ball travels further. You get to see different flights and everything, and softer ground, be able to attack the flags. It's just a lot easier and easier to get better, and a lot more time to get technical and simple shots and stuff. And were you were you, were you playing more? How, how often were you playing a week? I was playing maybe two times a week and practicing the same two times a week on top of work as well with that. Very good. So he's keeping you busy. And, and what about um, a bit of like research on your and advice on your swing? Did you did you look at that? I did that a lot in my spare time. I was just watching videos because there's times where Stuff was closed because of COVID, and I just sat there and watched videos and practiced cutting and stuff. 
Uh, and and what's the biggest improvement in your game? You'd say. Probably my putting. I think last year I changed between about ten putters, and I decided to buy a Scotty Cameron there. I think it was the best move. And, and that's that certainly helped. And and also I believe did you take lessons as well as I you took with Michael McGee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did that help your game? Very good. He got very like there was things in my swing that were very small, but made a big improvement. Well, obviously, if you've gone down to, to where you are, um, and, and and that's that's testing me to him as well, and to you, because you know it's it's easy being taught, but it's actually putting it into practice. Kieran, I believe you have taken a little bit of a more futuristic way in, in improving your game. You you would be yourself taught, um, but you've also done a lot of research on YouTube. Tell me tell me more about that. Yeah, I just like watch videos on YouTube, like Rick Shields is called and Peter Finch. So I would just like see what they do and then just try different things out in the course. And if it doesn't work, just go back and try their other things. So yeah, it's good. It's different, like, but it's hard. But yeah, it works off, pays off. Yeah, it's the, it's the practice element as well, isn't it? I, I know of another guy who uh, who plays uh, plays locally and he's gone from 25 of a handicap down to 17. And he, he's also the same. He would watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos. And he'd be out in the back garden and he and he, he worked really hard and he's chipping and he said it's uh that's just improved his game. Uh, that's the strength of your game, Kieran, around the greens, isn't it? Yeah, like just short wide shots is probably one of my best part of my game. So because of just watching like Sky Sports and all as well, they just teach you how to play the wee small shots. Yeah, and it looks a lot easier on the TV, Kieran. Is that right? Yeah, very easy compared to what we have to deal with, like bump and runs and all. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, and and, and I say, Kieran, I, I have to admit now, I I saw you in a driving range about three and a half, four years ago in Letterkenny, and and I was quite amazed by how you were able to shape a wedge, and and that's at the start of your journey where you were only learning golf, but I could see that there was. There was massive, massive potential in uh, in what you were going to do, and, and 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 I'm delighted that you've stuck to it. And the results you've got are uh, both of you, Kieran as well, is down to the, the 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 practice that you put in, whether it be lessons, whether it be research, whether it be out in the back garden. You are where you are for a reason, which is which is brilliant. Um, you're good buddies off the off the golf course, isn't that right? You you have played together. You probably your your golf journey has been together, hasn't it? I. Me and yeah. I played in Letter Kenny a lot in the last two years in Port Town. We played weekly probably. And, and, also, and also Karen, your 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 soccer buddies as well. Yeah, we play a lot of soccer as well for Kilmacrennan. So yeah, it's good, like it's good to have a different sport. So the, the big the big question is who's who's the better who's the better soccer player? Oh I don't oh, well. know. I think I'm a bit of a set-piece master, you know, Sean. What's that, Keen? I think I'm a bit of a set-piece master last night. <laughs> yeah, I was in the game, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you not a goalkeeper from 45 yards, was it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to do. And it, and it, and it worked. <laughs> and, uh, but it's it's great because you've got a good camaraderie there and, and, and you can obviously, you you take that onto the golf course. And and last weekend, you, uh, you represented Port Salon. Uh, in the Fred Daly, which is it's fantastic to see um, because the club haven't actually fielded uh, a, a, a team in the Fred Daly for a number of years. They've been in the wilderness, and it's a sign of positive things going forward. Um, how did that? How? What was that experience like for you guys? Because you're you're still very very young to be playing that quality golf. Um, well, we got beat like so. It wasn't the best of experiences, but it was still good to like get out and play a different course. And the boys were playing it against were very good. Like so, it was a good experience. Play a different style of golf. Yeah, it only stands you in good stead as well. What did you learn from it, Keen? Uh, not uh, not much. I like, was playing the Friday before there two years ago for Letter Kenny, and I think I've had a bad run twice there. It wasn't good, but it was. It's good to play competitive golf and learn different types of math, like golf, like match play and stuff. It's good crack. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? You Sometimes you've got to learn to lose to win because then when you win, you would just enjoy it far more. Would that be fair? Yeah. So, Kian, what are your what are your goals now 
Key and Page, the golfer, what are your goals now for the next couple of years? What is it you want to do? Well, the dream would be to obviously go professional. That's a lot of work. Like I have two years here, they would try and get a scholarship. Me being an American citizen will help a lot. Like, but uh, there's a lot of work to do in the next two years to try and get that scholarship. So there's a lot of practice and small things. Very good. So that's the goal that uh, you can, and you can set a time limit on, on that as well, which is good. And what about yourself, Kieran? What's your, uh, what's your goals? Yeah, probably just to get prof go professional like in golf, but and then hopefully if I if that doesn't work out, probably hopefully be a teacher so I can have a backup in case it you know doesn't go to plan. But hopefully it all goes to plan. I know, please got to go to plan, and, and if you keep working hard, that then, then you've got a chance. But it's always good to have that backup. Yeah, uh, and and Luke alluded to it earlier about uh, the the educational piece as well because that will stand you in good stead in whatever you do in life. Um, Golf's in the blood in both families. Um, Ian, you're, you're, uh, the Page family are pretty decent golfers. Um, you've got Patrick, your brother. He's, what's he playing off now? He's playing off too. He's out in the States. So, so is there a bit of rivalry between you? Or? That's, that played a big part in how he's getting better. Always trying to beat him there. And, and this year was finally the, the stage where I got to beat him there in America. And I think he didn't take it too well. He probably didn't talk to you for a couple of days, did he? Right. Yeah, take a break from golf then after I started beating him. <laughs> yeah, that's never an easy one for the older brother, let me tell you. And uh, your dad, your dad's an influence as well. He's uh, He's been around the golf course for quite a while. He's played scratch, I believe. Has he, has he been a help to you in, in your journey? Yeah, my dad, he, he played the plus three and he was he self-taught. So over the years, that's how I started to learn how to swing and stuff. And when I started golf, I used to grip like a hurl the right hand over the left hand and i think mean, i played the first couple of years of golf like that and i couldn't change it and he kept telling me to but i just laughed at it i couldn't do it but he he, he played a big part in my golf and and when you did that did, did that make an immediate change to how you were hitting the ball it made a complete difference to swing everything how i was hitting the ball flights and stuff very good very good yeah it's that it's that would be called cat handy does it know what it is handed a, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I forgot actually you played hurling. Do you, you don't, yeah, you wouldn't have time for hurling anymore, have you? No, no, I, I stopped playing hurling this year. It's dedicated to the golf, fair play. And and Kieran, you're the same, you're no different. You're, you're of a family of golfers as well. Your your dad is, um, is a is a is a, a low handicapper, and you have a brother that can hit the ball from Kilmacrennan nearly to Bala Buffet, he hits it that far. It not sometimes it takes a turn off the lift from the ball buffet. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's good. Like dad taught me a lot because, and then dad's mum as well, Nana. She taught me a lot as well because she's a lady golfer who's very low. So it was good to have like two different people helping me along the way. And you've got uh, you've got a, a cause, a twin cousins are, are are playing off pretty low. Are they two and three are they? Are they? Yeah, Nile and James are off two and three. I think yeah. And that somebody tells me they're a, a, a relation of, is it Paul McGinley? Yeah, Paul McGinley, they're, that would be their nephew, I think. So there's, there's a, I suppose there's a challenge. Is, is the golf coming from the McGinley side or the McCormick side? Uh, oh, well, I would go the McCormick side anyway. I'm, su I'm sure Mal Mark and Malcolm would be of the same opinion as well, definitely. Yeah. Um, lads, it's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, talking to you today uh you're you're an inspiration um i wish you every success in the future what's clear from all my guests today is that um they don't take their talent for granted um in fact it's the work ethic that they they all have instilled that's making the real difference to what they're doing as golfers golf offers so much you can learn etiquette you abide by the rules you respect the course you have integrity and my four guests today already have that in abundance their commitment to the sport is unquestionable. Their drive, ambition are what takes them to the next level. Carlos, Luke, Kian, and Kieran, thank you for joining me today. I'm pretty sure it's not the last that we'll have heard of you four guys and young golfers turning into senior golfers. I'd like to also thank today's sponsors, Creative Landscape and Works in Letterkenny, um, helping to create your own mini golf course in your own back garden. They can be contacted on 07492. 05039 
are online at creativelandscapingworks.com. Um, I'd also like to thank Oshin Kelly for uh, produ producing the show today. If you'd like to get in touch with the show, you can email htf at highlandradio.com. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to comment below. Um, my name is Sean Quinn. You've been watching Hitting the Fairways. Enjoy your golf week. And remember, keep hitting the fairways.